What areas of my life need my attention? What is draining my energy? What do I need to do to balance my life? Balance isn't found. Balance is created. Hey guys, it's Jen. This is Reframing Me, and I am your host, Dr. Jennifer Brubaker. Today, we're moving on to the next part of our goal-setting journey together. If you haven't already listened to part one, pause me and go back to episode 114 and listen now because it will definitely set the stage for where we're going today. And then come back and join me for part two. If you have already listened, then you are totally ready and hopefully you're as excited as I am. Okay, so we're going to move on to step two. Okay, so in part one, I gave you the assignment of reflecting on the prompt, what life do I want to manifest for myself? And what if today I just ignored any narratives in my head and maybe even from others that says I can't do it and replace them with stories of how I did it anyway? And I know that you have all been good little students and completed your assignment and now you're totally ready to move on. You probably noticed that this prompt was pretty philosophical. You may have written like stream of thought, or you may even have more of a bulleted list. You probably have some type of combination of points that are both on the more abstract side, as well as some that are on the more tangible side of things. Chances are that your reflection is a combination of your dreams and your goals and your objectives. We said last time that we were starting off laying the foundation for this whole goal setting process, but this is a big task, right? So we're just taking it one step at a time. We are building from the bottom up. This mixture that you have in front of you from this prompt to this compilation of your dreams, goals, and objectives, this is the life. This is who, this is what you want to manifest for your future, your future life, your future you. Most people, this is where they would stop. And this is what they might consider to be goal setting or manifestation. After our last conversation, can you see why this might be a problem? You'll remember that we said we want our goals to be smart, right? Do you remember what smart stands for? Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. I know that when I look at my reflection, it doesn't have all of those things. Mine includes things like financial freedom, prioritizing mental and physical health, having close relationships with the kids as they grow up, the ability to travel regularly around the world. And I mean, yes, I totally want all of that. But those are really just my dreams. They don't have all of those other facets that we need, right? None of them are specific. Definitely none of them are measurable. I actually do think that my whole list is attainable and for sure it's relevant. But unless you count grow up as being time bound, not one of them has any kind of time component to it. So really, yes. It is good for me to dream, but as is, my entire list is hopeful and and vague intangibles. Like we said, this is just the foundation for us to build off of. And I am guessing that like me, you all have a great jumping off point now. And I will tell you that in my opinion, although these reflections may seem scattered or unfocused or theoretical, and they definitely don't look like structured sets of goals right now, you may even be looking at them like, okay, this is awesome, but how do I get there? Although you may feel like you're all over the place right now, in my opinion, this is like the most important part. Because this is truly what you want. This is who you want to be. This is the life you want to have, raw and unfiltered. This is the future that you want for yourself. And it's a really hard thing to do, honestly and authentically. But yay you, look at that. You did it. You're here. You've done the hardest part. You showed up to let yourself imagine how things could be. 
Now we just need to figure out how to get you there. Okay, so you might have made sure to cover your bases and touch on each of the areas of your life, or maybe you skipped over some things, and that's totally okay. Today, we're going to make sure that you're thinking about your life holistically by completing a life wheel, because a balanced life is the key to happiness. Balance is the key to a happy, fulfilled, peaceful, and abundant life. Without balance, we can find ourselves missing opportunities and full of regret. Balance doesn't mean that at every moment of our lives, we are devoting the same resources or place the same priority on each area of our life. But it does mean that we have found that magic ratio that allows us to distribute our resources where they are needed in order to provide us with everything that we desire. And unfortunately, it's not a one and done thing. Just like everything else, it's constantly changing and evolving, which is why sometimes everything is great and then, well, it's not. So I know a number of you are doing this as a fun project with your teens or to my teens, you're doing it as I'd say a fun project with your moms, but maybe it's more of a make her happy and get her to stop bothering me for a little bit project. Oh, tomatoes, motto, whatever. But that's fine. Your balance is probably going to be different from each other. And moms of tweens or young teens, yours will probably be different than moms of older teens or of college students. And if you're at a busy point in your career, your focus might be more on professional areas than personal or whatever. I think you probably get what I mean. We're all going to be different. Okay, so... A life wheel is a tool that life coaches use to help you kind of take note of each of the areas in your life and figure it out. Figure out where are you balanced, where are you not? Where do you need to focus more resources and where could you pull back a bit? Where are you satisfied and where are you lacking? Our lives, we get really busy and we may not even realize it, but sometimes our energy gets focused on certain areas and we end up completely neglecting other areas that may be actually quite important and we end up off balance. This makes us then feel stressed and frustrated and like we're failing. But if we make a life wheel, we can look at each area of our life, like one at a time, and assess them to figure out what areas need more attention for us, and then we can start setting our goals to thrive in all of the areas of our life in a balanced way. So our step one was fairly easy. It really was no different than any other journal prompt we might do, just dreaming about what we want out of life. Step two is going to be a bit more time consuming. It's actually a really great metaphor for the wheels themselves. Like if you were to look at this goal setting process like a pie, each piece isn't going to require equal amounts of energy, right? Like the journal prompt, it didn't require as much from you as this part will. And I'll give you a sneak peek here. The next eight steps are all going to be smaller and require less energy than the wheel itself. But then each of those is going to have different energy and attention levels that they need and the energy and attention for each will be different for each of us. Okay, now we're sufficiently confused. So typically, a life wheel starts by including six to eight dimensions of your life that are important to you. We're going to discuss the main eight areas that are pretty universal. Now, you may include all eight, or maybe you just have six of them or seven of them, depending on where you feel that you are in your life. Then in the next eight parts, we'll work on setting goals and objectives for each of these areas. See, it's totally manageable, these yummy little bite-sized pieces. So this wheel strategy is very widely used. You'll find a bunch of different versions online that are all pretty similar. But really, you can just totally make your own if it's easier. It's basically, it's a circle with lines, like a pie with eight pieces. I trust that you can figure it out. The eight different areas that we'll use are family, 
All right. Now, of course, this is working under the assumption that most of y'all are moms like me. So family is the primary area. But for my teens out there, you might skip this one and simply stick to having one that's called relationships, where you would include both family and social relationships. But if you have a family section as a primary area, then your second one would just be social relationships. The third is career, which obviously, if you don't work and have no desire to work, then you would simply leave this one out. Um, Financial would be your fourth. Your fifth would be wellness. All right. Now, wellness includes mental wellness, which is the attitude, even uh, physical wellness and spiritual wellness. Then personal growth, all right, personal growth. So this includes self-improvement, education, any artistic endeavors or service to others. Then you have environment, which environment is the area that you live, your home, your office, your car, the environments that you find yourself in. And then your last one is pleasure. So anything you consider that you do for fun or for enjoyment. You probably see how some of us are going to have six areas, some have seven, some have eight. You might also see how some of these kind of overlap. Like for me, fitness, I would consider to be both wellness and pleasure. And for some of you, art might be personal growth and pleasure. So when you're balancing, you're going to kind of need to assess where and how much you could count these in each area. It's not an exact science. Just go with your gut. So You either draw yourself a little circle with eight segments or you print one out. Then you're going to write on it. You're going to write in one family, social relationships in the second, career in the third, finances in the fourth, wellness in the fifth, personal growth in the sixth, environment in the seventh, and pleasure in the eighth. Okay. Obviously, like I said, your wheel might have six, seven, or eight parts, depending how you choose to manage the family and social relationship situation or career. I know that I cannot possibly combine mine into a general relationship category because those are so vastly different for me. Okay. So keep in mind that this activity makes the assumption that you are going to be happy and fulfilled if you can find the right balance of these areas. All right. For our goal setting journey, this is a piece that you are going to use then to figure out what goals you want to achieve. Okay, so you're going to go through each area and you're going to consider a couple of different things. You're going to go through and you'll rate them each on a scale of zero to 10. Zero is low and 10 is high. First, ask yourself how much of your energy is this area of your life taking from you? And then ask yourself, how satisfied are you with your current position in this area? Those may be two very different numbers. Really think about it and be honest with yourself. No one is judging you. No one is even seeing this but you. So start with family. How much of your energy does this area of your life take up? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're here, it's probably pretty damn high, right? Then ask, how happy are you in your family? How happy are you in your relationship with your partner? As a mother, a daughter, a sister, are you giving enough time to your family and to your children? Is your partner supportive of you? Are you supportive of them? Do you feel loved and supported by your family? Ask yourself those types of questions as you are assessing what is your energy level that you devote to it and how satisfied are you with it? Then move on to your social relationships. Are you, what kind of energy level are you devoting to your social relationships? Are you happy with your social status? Are your friends supportive? Do you spend enough time with them? Do you feel loved and supported by them? Do you show your love towards them? That type of thing. In your career, how much energy is your career taking? Are you where you'd like to be in your career? Are you heading in the direction you'd like to? 
Is there something different you'd rather be doing? Is your career on the right path? Your finances. How much energy are you putting into your financial stability? Is your current pay enough to satisfy your needs? Are you prepared for the future? Are you content with the trajectory of growth? Are you happy with the level that you're at? And wellness. How much energy are you devoting to your wellness? Physical, mental, spiritual. Ask yourself, are you physically fit? Is your diet healthy? Do you devote enough time to fitness? Too much time? Are you happy with your mental health status? Do you take enough time for self-care? Are your inner and outer worlds connected? How content are you with your relationship to your inner self? And how content are you with your spirituality? Personal growth. How much energy are you devoting to your personal growth? Are you dedicated to it? Are you looking for new life experiences? Do you need to further your education? Is learning new things a part of your life? How do you view yourself? Are you proud of yourself? Environment. How much energy do you put into managing your environments? Do you like the area that you live? Are you satisfied with your current living arrangement? Does your home space make you feel safe and content and happy? Are there improvements that you feel like you should be making? Is your car satisfactory for your life? Is your office space set to make you productive? And last, pleasure. How much energy do you leave for pleasure? Are you enjoying life? Do you have hobbies? Do you have enough time to engage in hobbies? Are there things you'd like to be doing? Now be honest on these. Remember, right now, you're just rating them, low to high, zero to 10. The higher the score, the more satisfied you are with your current state of each area. Don't rush this process. But once you do finish, go back and look at the big picture. Spend a few minutes journaling about what you see. Is this the life that you thought you'd have? Is this the balance that makes you happy? How does your current situation differ from the life that you'd like to manifest? What areas do you see big discrepancies between the energy that you're putting in and the satisfaction that you're getting out? Where do you lack balance? Don't be discouraged by this at all. If the person and the life you want to manifest is significantly different from where you are based on your life wheel, that's okay. That is why we're here. Those gaps, those gaps are what we are going to fill with our goals. So it's actually awesome to have that space to work in. You can totally create the life of your dreams. And if on the other side, you're not far off, then that is fantastic too. Maybe you're just a bit farther down the road than some others. Maybe you've been traveling this journey for a while. We always need to remember to run our own race. We are not in a competition with anyone else. Never compare your story to someone else's because their chapter four will never be the same as your chapter one. It's all a process. And comparison is the thief of joy. So, Spend some time on this today. Ask yourself, what areas of my life need my attention? What is draining my energy? What do I need to do to balance my life? And then come back as we start to tackle our goal and objective writing for each of these areas of our lives. Because balance isn't found. Balance is created. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy the show and think someone else might like it or benefit from it, please share it with your friends. I know that goal setting can benefit everyone. Like I mentioned, many of you have teenagers who could also use just a bit of goal setting. Please follow the show so that you don't miss out on any new content. 
follow me on socials, on TikTok and Instagram, it's Reframing Me. And on Facebook, it's Reframing Me. And join the Facebook group, Reframing Me, the podcast community. Until next time, be well and communicate.